This then is the third video in a series or a playlist which goes over how I'm repairing an e-scooter. This is one that has the battery in the stem. There's a link to the playlist, you can watch the others there. In the last video I showed how to find out which of the cells in the pack were not taking charge and were unrecoverable and needed to be replaced. Those have now been replaced and the battery pack is up to voltage. Unfortunately I then discovered that the BMS itself was faulty. So in today's video we're going to be swapping that out and hopefully testing the battery and getting everything working again. I've sourced this BMS that is a 7S configuration up to 25 amps. More importantly I've sourced one that has the correct pinout for the balance lead. I did have another BMS, but the balance lead was completely the wrong way round, positive and negative reversed. This is the lead then that was supplied with the BMS, and we can see that that fits into the original BMS balance cable port, and as we saw before, the negative is at this end and the most positive at that end. It should then be just a question of swapping over the battery wires themselves, now you have to be especially careful when doing that as this wire here which is red is in fact negative and conversely the black wire is actually the positive coming from the end of the battery pairs in there. I've taken the precaution of disconnecting this lead from the negative end of the battery as to not destroy things any further. Without further ado then let's remove the cables from the old BMS and get things prepared for swapping it over. Just before we do that the strange black thing hanging off the end here is in fact a thermistor for sensing the battery pack temperature as a safety measure. That will then go into the top of the first battery compartment there and be glued to the first set of cells. This BMS then only has two connection points on it, the P negative and the battery negative. There'll be a link down in the description as to where I purchased this particular unit. You can see then to the P negative goes both the negative of the load and the charging negative. Not surprisingly it's only the battery negative that's connected there. The positive wires all being joined together directly to the positive on the battery. With that in mind then, let's go ahead and solder it. Remembering of course first that this is the battery negative. I have to keep reminding myself. The negatives from both the load connection and the charging connection then soldered together there. Go ahead and put that in the hair. This then the positive from the battery and these two finally will be joined together. I've completed the wiring for the BMS now. There are all the positives joined together and the balance lead in place there. Let's take a quick run down the string of batteries and see what the individual pairs are measuring. The first cell then, 3.96, 3.5, 3.8, 3.2, 3 3.6, 4, and finally 3.5. As I've replaced some of the cells and the pack has not been charged as a whole for some considerable time, it's no surprise that there's a degree of difference between the cell voltages which is obviously the function of the balance port to sort out. If now then I measure across the output connector, we have 25.9. Re remember the last time I checked that with the faulty BMS, there was no output. I've also attached the charging port there. Let's get that hooked up next. Connecting the supply up then, we can see the cell voltage there. If I switch on, 
it's gone into constant current mode the current there bouncing around a bit i guess as it's trying to balance the cells out i think i'll leave this now for maybe an hour or so and then come back and see if the individual battery pairs are closer in voltage after an hour or so then the pack was indicating that it was fully charged i checked the cells and they were closer in match but i guess it will take a few cycles for them to get properly balanced i guess what you're really wanting to see is it all go up in flames when i finally hook it up what i've had to do is to use the motor from my white scooter if you've watched the previous videos you will know that the black scooter motor wiring was completely burned out everything's hooked up then apart from the battery let's see what happens firstly see if it will turn on yes it's indicating 26.6 .6 volts so not quite full will the motor spin up no all the wiring appears to be complete the only thing i can think of is that this is the controller from the black scooter which had the burned out wiring so perhaps the controller is damaged i'll go ahead and swap that out for the white setup back now then with the controller from the white scooter and the display and such like let's see if we have any joy this time Well, we have a display and we have a motor. Pump up the volume. Let's just check the brake. Yeah, brake's functioning. I guess the only thing to do now then will be to try and put the whole thing back together and see if it actually runs up the road. Let's see now then if our hard work is going to result in us getting off down the road. Wish me luck. So far so good. Let's try the brake. Brake is working. Woohoo! This has got to be the most uncomfortable machine I've ever ridden. Happy days if you get one of these. <coughs> Bloody nightmare. In conclusion then, I have to say, if you're thinking of buying anything like this, please don't. The thing is an absolute piece of junk. These no-name brands, you saw the two of them here that I started out with, both of them showed signs of very poor manufacturing, especially the wiring and the way in which they failed shows that having the battery in the stem is problematic on so many levels it's it's just not true from a rideability standpoint having the weight in the front stem puts it as a very high center of gravity it's much better to have the batteries in in the base like uh, other models in addition to that the very small wheels with solid tires make for a an extremely uncomfortable riding experience shall we say you really need to go with bigger wheels that have pneumatic tires or puncture proof tires on them to give you some degree of riding comfort by now you will also have realized that actually working on one of these things taking it apart is also an absolute nightmare and to be avoided at all costs essentially then i have saved you any pain that you may have been considering taking one of these apart or buying one in the first place and this is the reason that you'll see so many of them for sale on second hand sites with uh, failed batteries avoid them like the plague is my advice thanks for watching